Hey friends, Erin here. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna do one of my things I love to do and that is talk about books. And oh, the topic I'm gonna talk about today is marriage. And I was thinking about, you know, when you get married and you're falling in love and you got those butterflies and those stars in your eyes and everything's so wonderful and this person's gonna make me happy the rest of my life and then you get married and it's not quite like that, huh? It takes a little bit of work and a little bit of prayer and uh, it's not quite like you're expecting it, but uh, marriage is wonderful and it's fun and happy and it's an adventure, but it does take a little work here and there. And so I'm gonna talk about my favorite books on marriage. I have my top 10. I probably have about 30 books in my Kindle and up on my bookshelf upstairs, but I narrowed it down to the ones that I love the most that I really wanted to share that I think could be helpful. So to start off with, I have been married for about seven and a half years. This August will be eight. So by no means am I a marriage expert or anything like that. I just uh, I'm gonna share from my experiences and some things I've learned along the way. The first book I'm gonna share is called Thriving in Love and Money. And I shared this one on my 20 books of 2020, but um, I included this in my, tw my marriage books because I think it is very powerful. A lot of conflict in marriage is around money. So this one is helpful with the conversation. This one is by uh, Shanti Feldman. And she really talks about money in a way where you see it's not about the money. It's a good one. The next one is also by Shanti Feldman. This is called Highly Happy Marriages or The Surprising Secrets of Highly Happy Marriages. Now Shanti is a researcher. She's written many different books. Um, I have two of hers I really enjoy. I like her writing style. Uh, she also writes from a biblical worldview, which I really enjoy. And uh, the thing I like most about this book is at the very end, she says, just choose one thing, one small thing, and that one small thing can make a huge difference. And the next one I wanna talk about is called Love and Respect by Dr. Egritz. Now this book is based off of just one scripture, one scripture from the Bible, and he wrote this whole book off of it. So he writes from Ephesians 5.33, my thought process went something like this, a husband is to obey the command to love even if his wife does not obey this command to respect. And the wife is to obey the command to respect even if the husband does not obey the command to love love and respect great principle the next one i want to talk about is called his needs her needs Jan and i listened to this uh as an auto book uh early in our marriage it was very good my favorite thing about this book willard harvey jr is that he talks about this concept called a love bank and so when you think about it like that every interaction you're either depositing acts of love, depositing good thoughts, good things, or you're withdrawing from the bank negative things, things that aren't great. So it's this constant dynamic of um, depositing, withdrawing, depositing, withdrawing, and sort of that way of looking at situations for how can you deposit more love into your spouse's love bank. He also talks about there are certain needs that only a spouse can do for the others. So there's needs that husbands have and wives have that only their spouse can do. So that's kind of thought provoking. The next book I'm gonna talk about is by John Gottman. It's called Eight Dates. And I talked about this in my 20 books of 2020 as well, but um, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper for this one. Jan and I don't really have a chance to go on dates right now, but we can still talk and communicate and talk about these topics. So the topics in here are uh, trust and commitment, addressing conflict, intimacy, work and money, family, fun and adventure, growth and spiritu spirituality, and dreams. And so my favorite one was the fun with adventure because it is so important to have fun together and to go on adventures. The next one, um, John Gottman as well, this is the seven principles of making a marriage work. 
and I, this is another one that Jan and I listened to together. For us, I found when we listen to a book together, it's very helpful because we can do that in the car, we can do that like while we're doing things around the house, and then we can talk about it. But this one, um, when we listened to it, I think we listened to a cross-country road trip. And my favorite thing about this one, he has a concept called love maps. So building your love maps is essentially building on your knowledge of each other. So you do this by asking each other questions. So as times go on, you're gonna grow and change and sometimes your questions will change or sometimes it's gonna be a question where it's gonna stay the same, but it's kind of like just checking in at each other. So in the back of the chapter, they have um, some questions to ask and different practical exercises. This one has 60 questions. So you can either ask them here and there, different questions, or if you have a lot of time, you can just go down the whole list and really get to know each other. Uh, question number 60, I'll, I'll share this one. It says, which sports team is my favorite? And so that one makes me smile because if you know my husband, um, he is definitely a diehard fan of a certain team. Our first date was at a football game. So he is a diehard Patriots fan and now I am as well. The next book I wanna share is called Happy Wives Club. This is by Fawn Weaver. I like this book because she did something really interesting. She traveled all across the globe looking for couples all over who have had long marriages, who have been very happy. And what she discovered is happiness is a choice. You can make that choice to be happy in your marriage. Uh, there's a couple defining characteristics of these long-term happy marriages, such as having a firm foundation of trust and commitment, having fun together, and um, encouraging each other. So I like this one because I do believe that happiness in marriage is a choice too. The next one I wanna talk about is called, What's It Like to Be Married to Me? It's by Linda Dillo. I love Linda Dillo. She um, also is part of a ministry called Authentic Intimacy. And one of the things that she's talked about before um, is the idea of are you a selfish lover or are you a selfless lover? And so that's a very good concept to kind of be thinking about. The book, she talks about some dangerous questions that you have to think about. They're dangerous because some of them are like this. Am I willing to change my attitude, that personal accountability? What can I do to make things different? And another one um, that's dangerous is, why do I want to stay mad at you? So that's a <laughs> good question. Good to forgive and give each other grace, right? The next book is called The Power of a Praying Wife by Stormy Omeriton. I love this book so much. I love it. If you are uh, married and I, I just can't recommend this book more to you as a wife. One of the most powerful things that we can be doing for our husband and for our spouse is just to be praying for them, lifting them up in prayer, praying for their, their spiritual walk, praying for them at work, praying for their health. There's so many different things we can pray about. A little story about um, prayer, prayer in our own lives, and I, I like to share this story, is we have a dog named Penny and she is a big part of her family. She's always in our family photos and everything, and we just love her. Well, when we first got married, um, I wanted a dog so bad. I had just gotten out of the Air Force. I'd been in the Air Force for eight years, and I would not get a dog while I was in the military because with all the travel and long work days and you know instability, I was not gonna get a pet because they're family. When we got married, I thought Jan and I were on the same page, and then, you know, as we were into the newlywed stage, I was like, I just don't think he's gonna wanna get a dog. He, he said he just doesn't like the hair, he doesn't like the smell, he doesn't like the mess and the extra responsibility. So I just started praying, you know, Lord, I, I really want a dog. You know my heart, that's my heart, Lord. I'd really like one, but, but Lord, if, if, it's not your will. If, if Jan is not going to change his heart about wanting one, I just pray that you take this away from me, this, this desire. I had some other people praying with me. Well, within that time period of starting to pray that prayer, that first part of, Lord, I really want a dog, but if it's not your will or it's not his desire, please take it away. Well, within that time, 
Jan's heart started to change. And then we saw an advertisement for Penny and we went to go look at her. And she is a uh, Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. So she was about six months old at the time. We got her in May, it's currently May. So we've had her for about seven years now. And when we saw her, we just fell in love. We both did. And I just, really, when I look at Penny, I just see God all over that because she is such a big part of our family and it was just so quick. He didn't love dogs, but he loves her. And so that was really uh, just sweet what the Lord did with that. Um, the next book I wanna talk about is called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. He has written so many good books, um, but if you have not read this book yet, what are you waiting for? Go read it. It is a really short, quick read, very easy to understand. If you have not heard about it, there's five love languages. And so you take a little quiz to find out what's your love language, what your spouse's language, and how to speak those uh, love into their life. And so one thing I've noticed is that mine has changed a little bit um, since before we got married and then a couple years into our marriage. And um, it's good to retake the quiz every once in a while to see if they change and see if a different one speaks to you. So I just cannot recommend this one either. This, again, as much as I can. This book, if you have not read it yet, read it. It is so good. Really, these books are great, but if you just pray and if you just go to your Bible and see what God actually says about marriage, because he is for marriage, I think that will be good enough. But this is a little bit of, little bit of help along the way. I wanted to share my favorite scripture when it comes to marriage. This is something I try to think on frequently. This is out of the book of Philippians, it's 4, 8, and it says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I wanna say that last sentence again. There's a key word. If anything is excellent, or praiseworthy, think about such things. You can always find something to praise about. And that is what you should focus on. Try to focus on the good. So if you are still watching right now, thank you so much for letting me chit chat with you, um, share my hobby with you. Thank you for letting me talk about uh, my favorite books and specifically today, my favorite books on marriage. Um, I just, I'm really enjoying this new hobby that we've been doing. Um, my husband and I are doing this together, actually. I think about the books I wanna talk about because I love books. And then my husband, he does all the camera stuff, all the audio, he's the producer, the director, the editor, everything. So um, this hobby is something we've been enjoying creatively together. So if you are still watching this, thank you so much. We, we are enjoying this process together. Um, I hope this was an encouragement to you. I hope these books were helpful to you. Um, I'm praying for you. I believe marriage is God's design and he um, loves for us to be seeking him and through his word and through prayer. So I just pray that you guys will be encouraged from this and I will talk to you later. Bye.